Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters and thank you for joining me for the 18th episode in my series on the most important women in the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Today's episode is on Zainab bin Ja'ash, one of the 12 wives of our beloved Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Zainab radiallahu anha was born 30 years before the Hijrah, the migration of the Prophet and his followers from Mecca to Medina. Her mother was the paternal aunt of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umayma bin Abdul Muttalib bin Hashim, and her paternal uncles were Hamza bin Abdul Muttalib and Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib. Her brother, Abdullah bin Ja'ash, was distinguished a general, and her brother, Abu Ahmed bin Ja'ash, was a well-known religious poet. Her father was one of the most astounding and affluent men of Mecca. In short, she came from an incredibly aristocratic and wealthy family. Her family was so prominent, they held the keys to the Kaaba, and all of the kings and the tribes in the surrounding Arabian Peninsula knew their name. Zainab was very beautiful, mashallah. She was intelligent and she lived in a world of fame because of her noble status. She followed her siblings into the Islamic faith at a time when Islam was now new and growing quickly. This growth was much to the contempt of the people of Quraysh, who were using all means of torture to deter the people from the new religion. This torture was becoming too much to bear, and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam ordered his followers to migrate to Abyssinia, now known as Ethiopia, and then to Medina. Zainab was amongst the migrators, and she travels with her siblings and nine other women from her family. This migration was a big turning point in Islam. There are, of course, many, many reasons we can discuss as to the importance of this migration, but there is one in particular which pertains to this story. While the Muslims were living in Mecca, the verses of the Quran and Islam itself were theoretical reality for the Muslims in a city filled with the disbelievers of Quraysh. However, in Medina, an Islamic state was established and the concept of true brotherhood and sisterhood, equality amongst men and women and rich and poor was applied. This new social system was a huge change for Zainab, who was used to her popularity and her status and was now equal to everyone else. In Medina, the prominent and the popular were those that were the strongest in faith, not in wealth. And it was in fact an ideal society. It was in this society that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Zainab and told her he would like her to marry Zayd ibn Haritha, his adopted son who was a freed slave and now an intelligent Islamic scholar. Zainab was shocked that he would suggest someone of nobility such as herself to marry a free slave. How could she, a woman of status, marry someone beneath her? This was absolutely unheard of. She repeated three times, I am better than him in my lineage. I am better than him in my lineage. I am better than him in my lineage. She was outraged and went home to complain to her brother Abdullah, who went to the Prophet to confirm that he did indeed ask for his sister to marry a freed slave. Zainab eventually did agree to marry with Ayah 36 of Surah Al-Azab, and it was revealed. It is not for a believer, man or woman, when Allah and his messenger have decreed a matter that they should have an opinion in their decision. And whoever disbelieves Allah and his messenger, he has indeed strayed into a plain error. So Zaydab and Zayd got married, but although they were both good people, their different backgrounds got in the way of a successful marriage. They eventually divorced a year later. Now you may wonder why this marriage was suggested by the Prophet wasallam if it was doomed to fail. There are reasons as to why this marriage took place, which I will discuss at the end. Now it was at this time that Prophet Muhammad wasallam was given the revelation that he should marry Zainab. Socially, this was difficult for the Prophet because it was a common belief that an adopted son was the same as a biological son. And it was of course, forbidden to marry the divorcee of a son. 
However, in Islam, an adopted son is given his own separate rights to protect his lineage and inheritance and is not considered in the same light as a biological son. That was when this verse of the Quran was revealed to ease the Prophet's social discomfort. And remember, when you said to him, Zayd bin Haritha, on whom Allah has bestowed grace by guiding him to Islam, and you have done him the favor of freeing him. Keep your wife to yourself and fear Allah, but you hid in yourself that which Allah will make manifest. You did fear the people, whereas Allah had a better right that you should fear him. So when Zayd had completed his desire from her, meaning divorced her, we gave her to you in marriage so that there may be no difficulty to the believers in respect of the marriage of the wives of their adopted sons when the latter have no desire to keep them. And Allah's command must be fulfilled. This is from Surah Al-Azab, Ayah 36. This verse is one that gets used a lot from critics of Islam to say that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was hiding feelings of passion for Zainab. In fact, what he was hiding was that he was to marry her in a society that would not accept that. It was revealed to her by Zayd that she would become the wife of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and she immediately went to pray about it. As soon as she finished praying, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, walked into her house and told her that Allah had performed the nikah, the wedding contract, and with the angels as witnesses, they were now married. This news came as a delight to Zainab and was something she used to boast about to the other wives. She had a simple wedding that had no dinner and was attended by 300 guests. It was during her wedding that the first verses of hijab were revealed due to the behavior of some of the wedding guests who were overstaying their welcome. Now we've all had our fair share of those kinds of people in our company. O oh, you who believe, enter not the Prophet's houses unless permission is given to you for a meal, and then not so early as to wait for its preparation. But when you are invited, enter, and when you have taken your meal, disperse without sitting for a lengthy talk. Verily, such behavior annoys the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he is shy of asking you to leave. But Allah is not shy of telling you the truth. And when you ask his wives for anything you want, ask them from behind a screen that is pure for your hearts and for their hearts. And it's not right for you that you should annoy Allah's messenger, nor that you should ever marry his wives after his death. Verily with Allah that shall be an enormity. Surah Al-Azab, Ayah 53. In her day-to-day -day life, Zainab had her own business. She was, in our modern terms, a fashion designer. She used to take skins of cows and other animals, leather, and tan and dye them to make into clothing and accessories. She sold them in the market and gave all of her profits to the poor. She was the most generous of the prophet's wives, so much so that when she passed away, the poor cried because they were worried who would take care of them in her absence. It is narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said to his wives, the first of you to follow me in death will be the one with the longest arm. The wives immediately started to compare arm's length and amongst each other. However, it was later understood that he meant long arm as in the most giving, the most lengthiest of giving charity amongst income generated by one's hand how far it stretched to help others. And this, of course, was Zainab. She used to give away her annual grant to all who needed income and prayed to Allah not to give her large amounts of money because it was a trial. Let me repeat that. Zainab used to pray to Allah not to give her large amounts of money because it was a trial. Zainab came from great wealth and status and to be so generous and humble with her wealth is what makes her such a good role model for us today. We should all follow in her footsteps and give generously to those in need, especially, but not only during the month of Ramadan. 
She was closest to Aisha radiallahu anha, who used to say that she had never seen any other person who was so eager to get closer to Allah, to gain nearness to him than Zainab. Zainab was more charitable than most, and her generous behavior with relatives was impeccable. Zainab stood by Aisha during the incidences of slander. When the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, asked Zainab what she thought of the situation, she replied, she did not wish to be involved and did not want to defile and taint her ears or her eyes or her tongue with such terrible accusations. Swearing by Allah, she said she found Aisha to be a truly God-fearing lady of exemplary character. She found in her the most wonderful traits of integrity, sincerity, and honesty. She said that she had not seen in her anything but goodness and virtue. Zainab passed away at the age of 53, 20 years after the Hijra. She left a great legacy of generosity and faith. All of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam's marriages happened for specific reasons that are lessons for us to learn from. With the story of Zainab radiallahu anha, we learned for the first time about the differentiation between an adopted child and a natural one. In Islam, great care is given to the rights of orphans. But this was a turning point in the revelation of these rights. Some people might ask why Zainab had to go through the marriage with Zaid and the divorce, and why couldn't she just have married the Prophet to start with? This was because the verse was to be revealed about the position of the adopted son and ignorance in society was to be addressed. This was the main lesson, but there's another one that I find important. See, someone once told me something that I loved. This was that you get married at a time when both you and your spouse are ready for each other. This means that you are both going through life, learning and growing from the situations that you encounter. These situations help you to form opinions and become the person that you are destined to be. It is when you have both gotten to a point where you are on the same page that your marriage will work and your paths will cross. This will happen at a destined time and place, Nasib, And nothing you can do can make it happen faster as Allah, Allah is the best of planners. You see, Zainab was very arrogant. She was a proud woman. Her marriage to Zaid and eventual divorce humbled her and her marriage to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam happened at the destined time not earlier nor later. Her experience with Zaid was just something that she had to go through. And while there was a reason for the rest of the Muslims to learn from this, there was also a personal lesson in it for her too. Another big lesson was that Zainab did not take advantage of the opportunity to slander Aisha, her competition. She did not involve herself in gossip when everyone in the city was doing so. And she chose instead to keep a positive image of Aisha, and she knew her. It is also important to note that Zainab was a businesswoman. She is just one example of how being an independent, successful Muslim woman is not a modern concept. I didn't really emphasize on what was Zainab's reason when she entered Islam through the influence of her older siblings. This is showing how important it is for older siblings to constantly keep a good influence on their younger siblings. Be role models. It is your responsibility. Now I ask your brothers and sisters, what did you think about Sign Up Story? Do you feel there are certain aspects of her life that you can relate to? Inshallah, we can all benefit from the story of Zainab's generosity and the virtues of Allah's timing. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.